Hello, in this video we're going to look at negative externalities. A negative externality is a cost that spills over onto people not involved in the activity. Consumers can create negative externalities by smoking cigarettes, playing loud music, talking loudly in a restaurant, having an uncut front yard, or taking antibiotics are just some examples. So some of the costs of these activities will spill over onto third parties. Somebody smoking a cigarette, there could be bystanders who smell the smoke, they don't like it, they might have asthma. So that's a cost being imposed onto third parties. Firms can create negative externalities. The production process may create pollution. It could create loud noise. Retail stores may bring a lot of traffic, creating traffic congestion. So some of the costs of this production are being spilled over again onto outsiders, third parties, people outside the activity. The pollution goes downstream, uh, affecting uh, people who live downstream, the pollution goes up in the air, affecting people in the nearby geographic region. Just because an activity creates a negative externality doesn't necessarily we want to ban it. So, for example, cutting your lawn creates a noise that may disturb your neighbors, but it also makes your lawn look nice for your neighbors. Taking antibiotics increases the likelihood of bacteria becoming drug resistant in the future but antibi antibiotics also helps fight bacterial infections. Fertilizer runoff pollutes waterways, but fertilizer also increases crop yields and lowers food prices. So the goal here is to reduce the activity that creates a negative externality to its efficient or optimum level. The efficient level of pollution is not zero. The cost would outweigh the benefits from such a large reduction. So the problem with negative externalities is that markets will produce too much output, an inefficiently high level of output. There will be a deadweight loss producing units of output that consumers value less than the social cost of those units. So once all the costs are taken into account, the private cost of production and these external costs, uh, there will be some units that are being produced and consumed which the cost outweigh the benefits. That is a deadweight loss. Why is there too much output? Firms only consider the private cost of production. Negative externalities from pollution create external costs that are not paid by the firm. These are paid by other people. People who have asthma now uh, might end up in the ER room uh, more frequently now. That is a cost being paid by other people. The firm is not considering the social cost of production when setting output firm will only consider the cost that it is responsible for paying, the private costs. A graphical example here uh, that deals with negative externalities. So just to recap here, the social costs of production are going to equal the private cost of production plus external cost. Efficiency or the optimum output requires producing output where the demand curve intersects the social cost curve. So before I go on, let's take a look at this diagram. So let's take a graphical look here. We got a market with a negative externality. We got a downward sloping demand curve as usual. Okay, here's our downward sloping demand curve. And we have our upward sloping supply curve. And I'm labeling this supply curve our private cost curve. The market outcome would occur where just the, the supply curve intersects the demand curve, and that would be at a price of $5 and a quantity of 5 So that would be the market outcome. But in the presence of a negative externality, that is not efficient. So in this example, the negative externality brings about an external cost equal to $2 per unit. So every time a firm produces this unit, it does perhaps $2 of environmental damage. So if we want to get the relevant cost of producing this item, we're going to add $2 to this supply curve with the private cost. So this supply curve with the private cost will just shift up by the amount of the external cost, or $2. That is the social cost. So again, efficiency now will occur where the social cost curve intersects the demand curve. That is, a, that is at a lower output level and a higher price. So the market outcome, once again, equilibrium price of 5, equilibrium quantity of 5. Firms do not consider the external cost, so they're going to produce more output than is optimal. Firms, 
firms don't have an incentive to consider this external cost. Somebody else is paying it. So this is inefficient. And one way we can see this inefficiency is look at this fifth unit of output. The value of the fifth unit of output, walk up to the demand curve, the maximum willingness to pay here per unit is $5. So consumer, so some consumer values this fifth unit at $5, but the, the actual cost, considering all the costs, a private and external cost, we walk up to the social cost curve, it's $7. So that is inefficient. The optimum output level, the efficient output level, occurs where the price is $6 and the quantity is 4 Notice here the value of the fourth unit, walk up to the demand curve is $6, and the social cost of the fourth unit, walk up to the social cost curve is also $6. So that is where we want to stop in producing units of output. We don't want to go producing beyond four units of output. Otherwise, the social cost curve will rise above the maximum willingness to pay curve, which is just the demand curve. So just to kind of recap, the social cost curve is found by adding the external cost to the supply curve with private cost. In this case, external cost is just this vertical distance between these two supply curves. There is a role for government in the presence of negative externalities. The, cover, the government could achieve the optimum output by putting a $2 per unit tax in the market, where the size of the tax equals external cost. A $2 tax, as we learned before, shifts the supply curve, the supply curve with private cost, up vertically by $2. So here the tax doesn't create an inefficiency or dead weight loss, but it actually eliminates one. So a $2 per unit tax equal to the size of the external cost would bring about this equilibrium here, where the price is $6 and the quantity is at its optimal level of 4 units. Correcting the market outcome leads to lower output and higher consumer prices. Placing a tax in the market causes firms to internalize externality. Every time a firm produces an additional unit of output, it will not only pay the private cost, but also will write a check to the government to pay the tax. So the higher cost of production will now lead the firm to produce less output. This activity is no longer as profitable. A $2 tax placed on buyers is equivalent to a $2 tax placed on sellers, so the government could address the external costs through the demand side of the market, shifting down vertically the demand curve by $2. So the tax incidence, the tax burden, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is unchanged regardless of which side of the market we tax. Taxes that are used to correct negative externalities are called Paguvian taxes, named after Arthur Pagu. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.